Some have called today's movie ridiculous, but I think that's total nonsense. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Lucio Fulci's non-exploitation flick, Demonia. Released in 1990, Fulci hoped Demonia would herald his return to the top of the Italian horror film mountain. It didn't, but even lesser Fulci is still mostly pretty fun. And the idea of a Fulci film involving demonic nuns definitely sounded like a hit on paper. But can Demonia further cement Fulci's reputation as the godfather of Italian splatter cinema? Let's get to the gore and find out! Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Miguel Chavez, Chet Czar, and Stealth Herself. If you'd like to sponsor a video, sign up for my Patreon. Link in the pinned comment in the description below. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on some creepy credits. Oh look, it's Brett Halsey. We last saw him in The Black Cat. Say what you will, but these credits are pretty hot so far. You could even say they're on fire. After we scroll past a bunch of people I've never heard of, we get this. Screenplay by Fulci and Pietro Regnoli. No dart, no sacchetti. We may be in trouble. Although, to be fair, Pietro Regnoli is actually Piero Regnoli, who gave us classic sick flicks like Nightmare City, Patrick Still Lives, and Burial Ground. Yes, no one could be bothered to spell his name right. And directed by Lucio Fulci, who blamed the film's failure on bad photography, presumably from his DP. With the credits over, we jump to Sicily, 1486. And you can tell this is a cemetery because it's clearly holy ground. Well, that and the bones give it away. Clearly the Sicilian kids don't respect this place though. Just look at all that graffiti on the walls. Then the locals bring in these ladies and they're none too happy to be here. And I can see why, because they're getting hammered. If you think about it, they could start a disco group named Sister Sledge. With the crucifixions done, the locals head out, but the sisters are like, we're just gonna hang around here for a while, guys. Then it's time for a change of seance. Wait a minute, did we just jump over into Fulci's The Gates of Hell? I'd be okay with that if we did. Turns out this is Toronto, 1990. This guy just learned the Leafs aren't winning the cup for at least another 31 years. And here Mike Huckabee is learning he'll never be president. Then it's time for a Fulci eye zoom. Glad we got to that early. Budget Debbie Harry has a flashback, then passes out. Man, this really is the gates of hell at this point. She doesn't die though, she just wakes up in bed. Is this rapture? If you're confused about what's going on, don't worry. Brett Halsey is here to drop some exposition on us. An archaeologist digs into the past with his intelligence, not his superstition. Oh, she's an archaeologist. I can dig it. And they're going to Sicily. Get some rest. Try to dream about the beauty, the grace, the ancient Greek culture we're going to study in Sicily. What a coincidence. From there, we jump to Sicily, where the stakes aren't very high. Hey, that's not J and B. Turns out these aren't really ruins. They're just doing the survey before they break ground on a new Little Caesars. Over at base camp, Brett Halsey is hanging out with Arnold Horshack. Do you kids even remember Horshack? Christ, I'm old. I guess no one bothered to tell Brett Halsey the scene was over. We're good, Brett. Moving on. Budget Catriona McCall, aka Liza, is out here exploring the ruins. It really tells you all you need to know about the state of Fulci's career when he made Demonia. He couldn't even get Catriona McCall for the lead. He's stuck with Meg Register. Then Brett Halsey shows up to be patronizing. What'd you think I was, one of your medieval spirits? After that, the mayor arrives to offer this ominous sounding pronouncement. The past is dead, and the dead must rest in peace. Don't worry, Brett's gonna put his mind at ease. Damn it, Jim, we're archaeologists, not necromancers. At any rate, at least the locals seem pretty stoked about things. Maybe Budget Blondie will come to karaoke night here at the bar. And look, it's Ripper from Demons. We then head over to this sailboat where Al Cliver's drinking and Brett Halsey's still trying to pull off wearing his varsity letterman jacket at 55. Did I ever tell you about the time I scored four touchdowns in the homecoming game at Polk High? Al drops some exposition and Debbie Harry has questions. And the people in these parts very rarely venture up there. You hear a lot of strange stories about that place. Like stories about that time I scored four touchdowns in a game? Budget Debbie Harry then continues the time-honored sick flicks tradition of being the leading lady with exactly one facial expression. This could be puzzled, angered, or despondent. 
And with that, Al Cliver's like, time to go. I gotta sail off to Matul to see Dr. Menard. Back at base camp, even though the place is full of trailers, it's impossible to ruin this view. Meryl Streep's less talented sister, Cheryl Streep, then heads off to explore. This is gonna be great for my new Urbex YouTube channel. She finds this tomb, but the residents are being very cryptic. This guy's like, oh no, we're tombed. Then Liza wanders right into this jump scare. It's just Ripper. He's all like, come back to the bar and hang out. This place is dead. Undeterred, Liza finds this secret passage like this is a Legend of Zelda dungeon. If you guess this leads to the chamber where the nuns were crucified, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. These are some nasty nuns. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean, they're all rotted, skeletal. She flees and runs right into Brett Halsey, who's gaslighting her pretty hardcore. I don't know what tricks your mind is playing on you, but you'd be well advised to forget this place. And I'm gonna... Back at the dock, someone's been on Al Cliver's boat. Looks like it might have been missionaries. Then a naked ghost appears. <laughs> yeah, I'm not making this up. And then blasts him with a spear gun. <laughs> I guess she made her point. I will say that's not the type of poon that sailors are looking for while on shore leave. If you were thinking, you know what this movie needs? A sing-along. Well, you're in luck. This dude's like, I'm not drunk enough to listen to this shit. Inside the tent, Debbie Harry's thinking, I can't tour with these guys, they can't even carry a tune. And you might have thought I was kidding about the one facial expression, but nope. Then it's time for a dream sequence. God, Brett Halsey's even gaslighting her in her dreams. This is the field where I scored four touchdowns. I'll give one bonus screenwriter's credit to whoever can tell me what emotion this expression is supposed to actually convey. Then she wanders off. Come on, fool chief, fix the focus. Why do I feel like he was auditioning to make a Calvin Klein commercial here? I really think someone just dropped the lens, cracked it, and hoped no one would notice. And now we get that most magical of movie moments, the flashback within a dream. It's like Inception. Football practice. Later on, we get another sweet fool eye zoom. And then she books it to the library. Frankly, I think this was a little overdue. Then this old guy shows up and is like, baby, I'd like to check you out. Back at the bar, this guy's beating his meat. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean, he's tenderizing this steak. And back over at the library, Liza's found the Necronomicon. And her commitment to this one facial expression is really amazing. Her reading is interrupted when this lady shows up. If anyone sees me talking with you, I'm dead. It's nice to see Fulci give us a mouth zoom instead of an eye zoom for a change. Who said you can't teach old dogs new tricks? Then it turns into a showdown to see who can emote the least. Go now. Quick. And eye zoom. Back at camp, it's another sing-along. Um, do they ever do any actual archaeology here? Blondie, meanwhile, is thinking, Christ, they're not even on key. She falls asleep and it's back to dreamland, which is amazing since this moon is literally brighter than the sun, apparently. She eventually runs into this nun and asks, what's with the question mark? Are you dating the Riddler? That's none of your business. If you were wondering if anyone was ever going to get killed again in this movie, I think you're in luck. These two drunks have wandered into the crypt. Not even Evans is going to bother us here. They hear some ladies laughing and are like, let's have some nun. Except this guy goes all Dick Van Spike and falls right into this booby trap. I see you. You can't get away from me. Ah, ah, ah. Too bad he didn't bring his booze. These drinks could have been spiked. Not to be outdone, his buddy Spike Lee does his best lemming impression and follows him to his doom. The paramedics take the bodies and everyone's like, they died as they lived. Drunk, primarily. Naturally, the cops show up. And look, it's Inspector Lucio Fulci. If you need me, you know where to find me, okay? I'll be right behind the camera in the director's chair. Liza, meanwhile, is back in town. 
why does it look like she's wandered into the island from Anthropophagus? I'd also like to point out that the mom and dad gene budget on this movie must have been astronomical. She just waltzes right into this random house and is rewarded with a jump scare. Oh look, it's a cat house. This cat will read your tarot. Hold on, it's the lady from the library. I mean, of course, she's a crazy cat lady. This means we're about to get another no facial expression acting showdown. You are here to learn the truth, whatever may happen. What do you mean? While we may not get any facial expressions, at least we get some exposition. A tale of violence and sin and blood. Go on. Liza's like, are you still talking? I'm trying to play solitaire over here. And finally, we get to some sexy nun action. Christ, Fulci, you can't make us wait an hour for the nunsploitation to start. D'Amato would have had these sleazy sisters in full-on debauched mode in the first 15 minutes. Then it's back to no emotion showdown. This is a real battle of wills. Then it's back to sex. Wait a minute, when did this turn into basic instinct? Someone's taking this whole communion blood thing way too seriously. And I guess they didn't use protection because she's got a nun in the oven. And I'm going to hell for a pun that terrible. Afterwards, in the least convincing scene ever, they burn this baby doll. Try the veal, it's delicious. Back in the present, must not emote. Then Liza leaves and apparently she took the focus with her. Back on the boat, Inspector Fulci's investigating Al Cliver's murder. Andy, I don't want any more responsibility. I mean, I'm already responsible for directing this train wreck. Isn't that enough? Also, do you think we could shoot a zombie movie on this boat? Then they find Al Cliver's head. I wonder what kind of fish you catch with that thing as bait. Back at Crazy Cat Lady's place, she's opening the windows. This place reeks of litter box. See, I wasn't kidding around. And the cats have turned on her. You could say she's not feline well. Probably coming down with a case of cat scratch fever. And I love that these are all basically cat puppets. And we even get some Fulci brutal eye violence that YouTube won't let me show you. Trust me though, her eyes were made of catnip apparently. Fulci's still investigating and I feel like there's a lot at stake here. There are people who deserve that kind of treatment. I'd hold my tongue if I were you. While he's busy making dinner plans, the other cops interrogating Brett Halsey. Why does this look like the weirdest Morton Downey Jr. interview ever? What did you discover about me that's so unexpected? Well, the fact that you scored four touchdowns in a football game was pretty shocking. I'm glad we basically stopped this movie dead in its tracks for this riveting interrogation scene. I mean, I'd much rather watch this than demonic nuns killing people. Good call, Fulci. Afterwards, Halsey's ready to leave, but Debbie Harry isn't. I'm booked for three shows at Bar Cecilia. This standoff is interrupted by Horshack. Ooh, ooh, Mr. Cotter, Mr. Cotter. Man, my Horshack sucks. And no emote followed by an eye zoom. Classic Fulci. Then we jump over to this tomb where Ripper's looking for Nostradamus' grave apparently. But all he finds are dead nuns. He nuns for the hills back to his shop, but he's hooked on that old time religion. <laughs> Jesus, is this dude Gene Simmons? Look at that tongue. Fulci shows up, and man, this really is like a dry run for him starring in Cat in the Brain at this point. He eventually finds the body in the freezer. Nice, I've been hankering for some ripper steaks. With things getting weird, Halsey's ready to get out of Dodge, but Liza's gone missing. Liza. Don't worry though, she's just picked up a bad habit and absconded with budget Giovanni Frezza, who's been completely inconsequential until now. The kid escapes and somehow dad's gonna get ripped in half. Tell mom I had to split. Seriously, how did this happen? He was just running along a second ago and now he's about to be split like a wishbone. I can't show you the money shot, but it's incredibly terrible. The prosthetic torso doesn't match the actor's skin at all. <laughs> Hilariously inept. Brett Halsey catches up with Ghost Nun and makes the wise choice to follow her into the ruins. <laughs> I mean, what could go wrong? And while he's doing that, the locals are coming with the torches and the pitchforks. <laughs> Inside, he finds the ghost nun again. I'm no optometrist, but Brett might have cataracts based on this shot. Anyway, she's like, I'll teach you to mansplain things to me, and shivs him right in the gut. 
It's amazing she manages to never emote even once during this scene. Then she pukes some yellow goo and takes her place on the cross while the locals burn the corpses of the dead nuns. You could say their dreams of revenge are going up in smoke. Then Brett shows up, hoping to get one last condescending comment in, but he's too late. She's dead. None of this makes sense, but let's just roll with it. I mean, it's no worse than the end of House by the Cemetery, if we're being honest. And cue credits. Oh look, Al Clever. Christ, they couldn't even get Al Cliver's name right. What the hell, Fulci? No one will mistake Demonia for peak Lucio Fulci. I mean, this is definitely not the Beyond or New York Ripper. By this point in his career, Fulci was in a bit of a slump. He hoped Demonia would be his return to theatrical releases, but it wasn't. And it didn't even show up legitimately in the US until 2001. In some ways, Demonia feels like a film directed by a Lucio Fulci cover band. It's got homages to the Gates of Hell and other Fulci trademarks, but it also feels like an imitation of what a Fulci film is and not the real thing. And yet, they're still fun to be had in Demonia. It's goofy and it meanders around, but it's fun watching the director in front of the camera tackling the nunsploitation subgenre. But can Demonia earn the Godfather of Gore another five barf bag rating? Let's go to the Gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Demonia is a little tame. We get a harpoon death, crucified nuns, a tongue nailing, a severed head, murder by cats, and the hilariously awful guy ripped in half as highlights. The effects aren't great, but there's enough here to earn Demonia a solid three barf bag rating. This is a modestly sick flick, but not what you'd expect from Lucio Fulci. Looking for another splattery Fulci flick? Then be sure to check out my review of Zombie. You'll find a link here on the screen after my outtakes. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters. Do not mess around with the set. Creature of habit, if things get moved one inch, I'm all out of my element. After a bunch of people I've never heard of, it helps if you put all the words in the script. This is gonna be great for my new or <laughs> that was not easy to say. Um, do they ever do any actual 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 There's a tongue twister for you. Just say actual archaeology ten times fast. Liza, meanwhile, is back in town. Why does it why does it I decided to up the challenge in today's video by including as many tongue twisters as possible. And Jesus, is this dude Gene Simmons? Man, that sounded like I was going through puberty again. Oh yeah, another classic episode. We're on a roll. God, why is it so fast today? Teleprompter. Slow down. I have nothing but complete respect for people who read off teleprompters professionally and not screw it up. This show would be amazing if we had a host who could read. I hope to God no one ever watches all these outtakes who wants to hire me for a job because they will not give it to me.